Hi, my name is Nina Ski, and I'd like to welcome you to a brand new episode of All About Art. I have a fantastic, bigger than fantastic artist, a world-renowned artist, Michelle Courier. Welcome to All About Art. Hello, Nina. Oh, I'm so Thank happy. You. Finally, we get to- I know, to, it's been a couple of years. A couple of years, it's, it's trying to pin you down because you're bunny hop <laughs> every which way, all across the countryside, but you have so many amazing oh. things happening in your life since, Last yes, time we yes. The tape. Can you tell me a little about like maybe your gallery first? Uh, gallery first. I opened Westward Gallery a year and a half ago in Denver, Colorado. And it wasn't anything that I was actually dreaming of, but it happened and it just happened so easily that I kind of fell into it a little bit, but it's been absolutely wonderful. Well, you know, I absolutely love the name. And I love Denver because I'm from Denver. Yes. So now I have somebody I can go visit. Michelle can show me around. I will. So I, I'm very excited. Um, now you come to Lake Tahoe region mm -hmm. about one time a year or twice a year? At least once, if not twice, every year. And you're showing up multiple galleries, primarily with that I'm familiar with would be Art Obsessions mm -hmm. Gallery, downtown Truckee. This is my home gallery. Nice. This is. Uh, I've been with Art Obsessions and David since 2011. Nice. So um, this, I've kind of focused on this gallery, focused my energy on this one because this is where what I paint, obviously, Tahoe. So I uh, focused on Art Obsessions for quite a few years. Yeah, and what what a nice place to be a part of. I I absolutely love the entertainment, the fun, the uh, beautiful artwork. Um, Yours especially. Thank you. <laughs> you know, as, a, as an artist, you know, what's so incredible um, to me is that, you know, many people come into the gallery and they want to take pictures mm -hmm. of your images. And I, at one point, throughout our relationship, I've asked, well, does that bother you uh, for anybody to take pictures of mm -hmm. your images? And you're so confident. <laughs> It doesn't bother me. No, I've I've had I've actually had some people you know try to paint what I do and you know everybody paints differently, everybody writes differently. So um, absolutely, you know, you can get ten artists looking at the same same thing. thing it's, gonna it's gonna be gonna, different. Yep, yeah, every mm -hmm. single one. We can and, all paint the same scene. Yeah, you know, internally, I think that um, you know, like David was saying the other day, people he feels are born with the artistic ability. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about that statement? I, th I think it's I think it's very true. Um, I am born of an artist father and artist mother, so I think a lot of its environment. I've been around the arts my whole life. All of my parents' friends were artists. Mm -hmm. My brother is an artist. I'm an artist. So out of four children, two are artists, professionals, and then my daughter, who is 21, is in training to be an artist too, and she's actually better than all of us. So. Oh. Now, so are you we're, speaking of Courtney, maybe? No, that's Kelsey, but oh. Courtney's a photographer. So I have three children. Uh, Courtney's a photographer, writer. Kelsey is a painter. And Michael is actually very talented in painting. Probably got it the most when he was young, when he was three years old. I could, I could see that he could see perspective, but he's not interested. He's interested in baseball. Wow. So. Well, that, that, there's no shame in that at all. You know, now, you know, speaking of, of coming from a family of artists, uh, and it's in your blood, uh -huh. per se, um, if I recall, when, in one of these books that I, I've been reading, I, there's one in particular I think was all about you. <laughs> and in there, I believe that I read that your, your father played like Fleetwood Mac in the yeah. background, and, and he'd be playing with music going on, mm -hmm. so that's how you grew up uh -huh. as, as Michelle, um, as a kid. Yeah. Um, what kind of art did your mom do? She was a weaver. She was a textile artist. She sewed and she had a big loom and she did tapestries. Nice. So she had a big loom and did weavings and um, that's all I knew was she had one half of the, the story of the house was her, her weaving room and the other half was my father's painting studio and we had one little corner that was our playroom. So In the middle. <laughs> yeah, in the middle, yeah. So I was always in the studio. That's sure. where we played. So I was just used to 
my parents creating something every day. We didn't really have a television. If we did, it had one station, right. and it was black and white, and you yeah. couldn't see we're it. We're dating so, ourselves. So yeah, <laughs> no, my parents were just didn't want to buy a TV. So hey, I don't blame them. That's so, sort of like a cell phone. There, now. Yeah, there was cable. There was cable and color TV. They were like, no, we'll just. So um, I just drew all the time to keep myself occupied and lived in a woods in a beautiful home my father built with a studio at the top, very modern, contemporary house that um, was a wonderful place in the woods. So the studio was at the top of the house, at the top of the trees, because we were on a hill. So I think uh, I looked out at tr the tops of trees, surrounded in the woods, so that I think that's why I started painting trees. Well, you know, that's something that, um you know, it may have been unfair to me as a person or an artist is that I wanted to stay away from landscape because everybody does landscape. I did too. You know, I um, did too. But when I look at your landscapes, they are not just a landscape. Um, as I perceive it, is you can walk into these paintings. Thank and, you. And it's very amazing to see how wet the canvas is, although it's dry. <laughs> um, another thing that uh, it was very admirable to learn about you is that um, you have always had just original artwork, mm -hmm. original pieces. So one of your statements to me before when I did ask about people taking pictures, mm -hmm. I don't worry about it because I only sell originals. So it was very positive and uh -huh. very um, sharing of mm -hmm. you as an artist to enable others to be able to see from their perspective or their level mm -hmm. of having a piece of Michelle Courier. Um, now, speaking of pieces of Michelle, um, you, when you grew up, was that in mm -hmm. Michigan? In Michigan, mm -hmm. yeah, my so whole you, life. Yeah, mm -hmm. you grew up in Michigan your whole life, and then you went on to not just be an artist from home or, or from generational or, or family, but you taught art. I did. I taught, gosh, probably 25 years or, or more. I started with um, children and children's drawing classes, then children's painting classes. Then I started doing portrait classes, figure drawing, um, and then adult drawing one and two, and then painting one, and then I ended with advanced painters. So nice. I taught advanced painting for about 10 years and just stuck with that. Yeah, and then one day you just decided, I'm retiring and I'm gonna be an artist 100% of the time. I mean, you've always been an I've artist. I've always known that, that, that there's a thing, a lot of people thought I made my living teaching. I made my living from paintings. Teaching was just a, something I love to do. I sure, made yeah. no money. <laughs> Well, you know, what I discovered when I started to teach, and, and I, I was amazed that I was able to teach to anybody, mm -hmm. um, as a mom, you've done that your whole life. Mm -hmm. you, that's what you do as a mom is you teach. And so it, it came very easily for me to be able to teach somebody this, that I, I, there's no way you can get me to paint anything. Yeah. And then I've seen the healing processes um, with some of the seniors that, that mm -hmm. have Alzheimer's or something or they're crippled up to be able to create a piece of art. And yeah. the most touching story that I have is uh, one gal was coming from Incline with her caretaker to a senior class that I was teaching. And uh, she had had a stroke. Oh. And when, you know, so I just kind of did one of those scribbly things and told her fill in, you yeah. know, what you want. And it took her, to do something. oh, I don't know, six weeks maybe to, to do it. And I said, Eleanor, um, are you finished? And she says, yes. I said, well, you have to sign your art. And she signed it. Her caretaker started to cry. Oh, because she couldn't write. She has, not, she has not signed her name in like 10 years. Oh, nice. So how therapeutic that was and what a value and talent that you have to be able to share your abilities with others. And um, I, I just love that, you know, and, and you're in, you know, I'm just so honored to have Michelle on the show today is that um, you are one of the most famous artists, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I mean, and I've had some, some big guys on the show, you know, but I mean, you're in books, you're in magazines, you're endorsing paints. Can you tell me mm -hmm. how that all worked for you? Uh, the the magazines, I think it started with the book, um, the 100 Artists of the Midwest. <clears throat> that was in 2011, and um, Ashley Rooney 
She does several books, Artists of the Midwest, Artists of the Southwest, Artists of the East Coast. So she handpicks 100 artists which she thinks are um, going to be the top in their area. So I was very honored to be chosen to be in the book. Um, and then I think that got a little recognition and I started getting into a few more galleries. Um, and then the, the, the other book. Um, I love this one here. Yeah, International Artists. And, and Ta -da. So, yeah, <laughs> Contemporary said, Artists. I, I, I absolutely love this. And, you know, um, I don't know if I'll have the opportunity to be able to, uh, what I'll do is I will take images that Michelle sends to me and I will be putting those at the credits. So if you don't get to see it clearly while I'm holding up a book or we're talking about <laughs> it, you'll get to see it at the end because uh, it, it's, it's just amazing. You know, um, like I say, is the colors, the choices, the, um, when you are deciding on doing an image, do you, um, sketch it out um, or you take a photograph? I take, uh, the process is I take photographs and for instance this one behind me I photographed the sky, the water, the rocks, this close up and then as a whole and then just kind of use pieces but I don't, I mean, don't copy the image like a, like a photograph. I try to enhance the colors, there's teals, and there's different colors in here. I don't tend necessarily sketch it out, but I lay in very bold color. Mm -hmm. So all the blue would be laid in, all the green would be laid in. I kind of save the area where the rocks are so it stays intense. Then I just slowly start in the farthest back, which would be the sky. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the trees and I just move forward and usually do the bottom part last. Um, this one was in my old studio in Michigan and I only had I think seven foot ceilings so this painting is six feet so I was almost on the floor <laughs> doing, and that's hard to do doing the bottom say. that I couldn't get back up but I now have a nice studio with tw 20 foot ceilings so nice now, now I, so uh, you know do you stretch out your canvases and, and uh, pin them to the wall? I stretch them on the stretcher bar first. On the stretcher yeah, bar. Yeah, and then hang them on just like I do here. I don't have an easel. I hang them just like this wall with, uh, you know, various screws and I can lift them up and down. Um, I find painting on a wall is, for me, the best. It's not leaning. It's straight. Right, it's, right. it's looking like it's going to be hung in the gallery. I also use track halogen lighting mm -hmm. um, and use the same lighting that would be in my gallery uh, now, while I'm painting. While you're out um, and, and you know you you're such a Tommy girl. I just like I, you get those tennis shoes on. You have your hiking clothes on. Hiking and clothes, bathing, and you get out there and you get dirty. I get right in the water. Pictures. Yeah, I'm you know, right in the water. Yeah, you you get into the work literally. And um, with doing that while you're on location, do you bring a palette or anything with you? And maybe um, in your note, I your do sketchbook, like colors. Yeah, I do notes. I don't have to do it so much anymore. But when I started out, I would do little color swatches and I just had like I, I can work with six I could do an entire painting with six tubes of color and white and black so the palette would be two blues uh, a cool and a warm two reds a cool and a warm and the same with the yellows and then two whites transparent and opaque and then a black I could do an entire painting with those colors and I make my students do that so I would take those few colors in little tubes and do little color swatches but mm. it's difficult because you have to carry water and you have to clean your brushes and so um, well, I it looks like you're taking, around water a lot yeah and <laughs> water, around water a lot so I take notes instead I take uh -huh. notes and on that day uh, because I'll take probably 200, 200 photos in one day. Easy, yes. And then I'll write what, what day it was, what time it was, what temperature it was. Um, was the light strong or was it filtered? Was it smoky? The sky was smoky the other day here. Mm -hmm. uh, so I find my notes recall what, um, what I saw. And I have an uncanny color memory because at uh, the University of Michigan where I went, they. 
I had just two years of color theory, mm -hmm. and all you did was mix color. I loved color theory. So that gets in your brain. And then just by staring at water and trying to figure out the color of the sky, and a lot of times I'll just sit and I'll paint, do color mixes of the sky that mm -hmm. day. Um, but this, you know, everything changes so fast. But no, it does, so, especially yeah. like for, in, in plain changes. air. Do you ever do that? I've done plain air. I'm not yeah. fond of it. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's, it's just almost too quick. And the cloud's gone. Yeah, <laughs> that fast too. You know. And then there's a bug in my palette. And <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. There's a lot of different uh, variables that you have to deal mm -hmm. with out there. Um, what I find uh, a question for me is what. Do you ever do oils, I guess? Is what my I've done oils. Is. Yeah, I, I love oils. Um, I just, uh, I found acrylic. My father's acrylic painter, uh -huh. and my brother turned out to be an oil painter. And my daughter is acrylic, but she thinks she wants to switch to oils. And I think there's pluses and minuses for both. Mm -hmm. I find with the acrylic, I use a lot of metallics in my work and little mica particles and fun things. And, you know, don't necessarily think you can do that so much with an oil as mm -hmm. an acrylic and I like the water I like I know the mediums I've been working with acrylics for 30 years so I better know by now well you know <laughs> a, a really honorable thing uh, that just recently I noticed because I follow you is that you're endorsing paints now I am I am and and so that's got to be really exciting and, and my head went bah -wah. <laughs> Cool Mine did girl. too when yeah. I found out about it. Yeah. Oh, that's just so <laughs> great. Could you talk a little about yeah, that? Yeah, I um, I uh, use Charvin acrylics. It's a new line. Charvin is from Paris. Um, it's a family-owned company, and um, I went probably five years ago um, and found them. And just I always, whenever I find a new paint I've never used, I buy a couple tubes to site because as an instructor sure. I have to say what each tube what you know the pros and cons are and I fell in love with them immediately the colors are luscious right out of the tube as a professional I sometimes don't want to mix a big batch of color these are like ready out of the tube they're mm. wonderful um, so I've been using them and I just started talking about them and Everyone says I'm great salesperson. <laughs> when I believe, <laughs> when I believe in something, I can. I, I want everybody to use it, you know. Um, and so I started talking about the paints, and then the company started, you know, hearing about it, and they said, "Would you like to kind of be the rep for um, the Charbons?" And so I test them, and I tell what what colors I like, and they're great for glazing. They're great for what I do. The mm -hmm. colors are very, very rich and very transparent. Yeah, so. no, I know that you do, um, when you're, you're finished with an original and you put a clear coat um, mm -hmm. over the top, do you ever use that clear coat in with your paints as you're painting, like layering, um, um, per se? Not, well, I, there's glazing medium, mm -hmm. which came out, oh, I don't know when it came out for artists. But, uh, faux painters were using glazing medium, and then, mm -hmm. of course, artists are always the last to get products. So, um artists are using glazing medium and then demanding it in the art field like you know calling the companies do you have this kind of glazing medium that we can use in paints mm -hmm. so golden Windsor Newton all of them came out with glazing medium probably about 20 years ago mm -hmm. and it's fairly that's fairly new in the art sure. world yes um, and that has been a blessing for acrylic painters if they haven't used glazing medium they should go run and get it because that's how I get the soft blurred edges mm -hmm. and um, I so I use that in a, a lot of my paintings so oh, sweet. yeah and then a varnish on top two coats of a clear varnish I use a gloss that it protects it from sunlight they will never fade mm -hmm. I've got paintings that are 25 years old they look exactly the same as when I painted them now, how would a person go about cleaning one of your paintings? You know, oh, there's residue from yeah, just the Yeah, they're pretty easy. I mean, you, you can take a mild dish soap, a little bit in water, and put on a rag and clean them. And then, mm -hmm. uh, then just, you know, a couple coats of uh, clear mm -hmm. on a soft cotton, 
you know. Um, well, you're, you're, painting, you're painting such as so wanted. I would be so afraid to try to even clean one. Oh, you know, that's, but they're pretty you durable. It, yeah, very simple. They're and, pretty durable. Um, then you ship any place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you would th therefore roll it up and mm -hmm. ship it in a tube versus a, a framed piece that could end up with a hole in it. Yeah, it's uh, much safer to ship uh, paintings rolled in a tube. Yeah, and you're, yeah. you are world renowned, not just <laughs> Lake Tahoe or. It's kind of fun, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fun. really a lot of fun. And, and I'm, again, thrilled to have Michelle on the show. It's been a long time to pin this gal down, but I'm going <laughs> to get her every year now. <laughs> uh, now, you'll be coming back to uh, the Lake Tahoe region in October, possibly? I think so. I think I'm going to try to come out. There's. Um, a couple things in the works on my work on a wine label, so oh, nice. that's that's in the in process. Yeah. Now so. speaking of wine labels, okay. Do you do any uh, gold leaf, silver leaf, copper leaf? Do you ever incorporate that into any of your paintings? I do actually. Yeah, uh, especially the abstracts. I do abstract work, which isn't shown as much, mm -hmm. um, but I do a lot of uh, gold leaf sometimes in the water. That's it, it. Most of it gets buried under paint, but you can still kind of tell. Oh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's I've fun. actually eaten gold leaf live on TV. <laughs> Have you? Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I could put them on Ingested. strawberries and stuff. Yes. Yes, that's can, true. Sorry, I inhaled that I don't think it's going to hurt you. I'm not, not going to let it hit the ground. No, <laughs> now, um, most recently, you have decided to get a couple of your, maybe your favorites, I'm not sure, and create cliches. Yes. Um, I have, since March, decided to go into the print market because almost every artist I know is doing the print market. And I can only do so many paintings. So, and to be able to have more people have access to the artwork. I like that. It's just the way to go. So I limit, I don't do every painting. I kind of pick and choose, and then I limit them to 100 per image. Deep, doesn't matter what size. They can be small or large, but it's number one and number two and number three. Yeah. So, and then the, the 100, and then I, that's it. That's going to be retired, so. Yeah, now. You still have one original, though. I have one original. There's only one. There's only one original, yeah. and then just 100 cliches, if you're lucky enough, yeah. to be able to get one of those. And, um, and you sell them in that order or in the size that somebody wants it. How do you choose, like, say, if I wanted number 100? Would I be able to buy that at the beginning of your Oh, gosh, I haven't even worked, worked that out yet. But I guess you, I guess you could. So I can sure request could. number 22. I like that number. I just have to hold it. <laughs> yeah, well, I have to pay hold for it. it. Pay for it and then it. hold it until you got up to 22. <laughs> yeah. Because okay. they have to be sold in order, so. Okay, that's, yeah. that you answered Because they're, exactly. they're, they're not, I don't, I don't produce them in bulk. I just produce a, like two at a time. Mm -hmm. So there's, and then some of the smaller ones, there's, there might be four. Right. So I think I'm only up to number six on a couple. Yeah, but that makes it that much more exclusive, mm -hmm. that much more affordable for a variety of levels of art collectors. Um, because there's some young people that maybe cannot afford an original, mm -hmm. but they can definitely afford that. Oh yeah, cliche. they're very affordable. Yes, yeah. and, and I loved that when, when we were talking prices, which I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let Michelle do that. Westward Calvary, Denver, Colorado, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, do you find being in business for yourself and having your own gallery um, challenging versus what you're used to or have you always had your own little gallery somewhere? I've never had a gallery. I've been in um, specifically Art Obsessions is the number one gallery I've been in. It's just a little more challenging balancing everything I'm mm -hmm. finding um, because there's days I want to get into the studio and I have my paint clothes on and I can't get in there <laughs> because I have to I have to do inventory or I have to clean the floors or, you know, do answer Other emails. Things. Yeah, I have to do the business part right. of it. But it's not that much different than what I've been doing, except I have a brick and mortar building. It's basically the same exact thing. Yeah. It's just now, it's just a little more of the building that I have to take care of, pay rent. Mm -hmm. But it's, the nice aspect is my studio is in the gallery 
So that was going to be my next question. I, <laughs> so I have a beautiful studio, beautiful big studio with a huge painting wall, 20 foot tall, and I get to actually meet and talk to people that come into the gallery instead of just hiding away. Right for weeks and months in a studio where I don't get any feedback, I'm getting a lot of feedback now. So, and it's fun for me because I love doing abstracts, which mm -hmm. hardly anyone sees. And so I put, put a couple out and people are responding and they're buying them. So nice. I'm like, all right. So, yeah. and the portraits, I used to do portraits, oh, 20 years ago, I specialized in portraits of little girls and florals. Mm -hmm. So I did my first floral piece in 20 years and I did a portrait again, and I hadn't done one of those in about 20 years too. So I'm bringing back some things that are my love portraits. I love doing portraits. Yeah, so true. now that I have this on my own gallery, I can kind of like, you know, Make maybe no one work. else wants a portrait, yeah. <laughs> but I can hang it. Yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> so. No, I mean, it, it makes it fun because again, um, from an artistic brain, it, it's kind of hard for me to um, restrict myself or gear myself to be in a certain mood. You right. Know, like maybe you're not feeling like water, mm -hmm. maybe you're feeling like snow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. you might be feeling wild and crazy with an abstract. You want to do some color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just get wild and crazy. Mm -hmm. you know, I just think that that's really fun and that you have yeah. that space <laughs> to do it. Yeah. And it almost makes you dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it can be really dangerous. <laughs> yeah, lots and lots of fun. Um, now, I would like to, I think, take a break for a moment just to make certain that I am covering everything and I don't want to run out of time, <laughs> you know. But before I take a break, I have a really, really important question. This just kind of crossed through my mind while I was waiting to interview you. Do you insure your hands? Ah, uh, I don't, but I've been thinking about that. That's, I mean, yeah, that's a really, really good question for me to really ponder very hard. Yeah, well, I just think they're so valuable to you. And I, I think that you, as being a born artist, because I believe that too, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that you would go above and beyond and achieve your beautiful art anyway. Mm -hmm. But as a pianist or a painter, you use it. These that's are your, your tool. This mm -hmm. is your tool. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think it's really important that as a mom, you should insure your hands. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have such beautiful work, and if you did anything, if you broke a pinky, I mean, that might change your thing. Oh, You're holding right. a brush yeah. or whatever. And do you ever go from left hand to right hand? Have I've you never used my left hand, ever. Mm -mm. Try it sometime. It's, it is amazing. It's a useless appendage. I thought that too until, <laughs> you know what, one day I was, I, I was doing a charcoal and I'm just going and going and going and I'm rubbing and rubbing and going. And my hand got hand? tired and I just automatically went to my left hand and I started, and I was like, oh my gosh, so I had to, I had to draw a picture of my left hand because I never knew it was there. I but it does work. Yeah. It's amazing. I'll try. I'll try it with an abstract, maybe. Yeah. We'll see what I, I just think it's fun, you know, just because your hand does get tired, so you'd mm -hmm. have to double insure your right hand <laughs> and half insure the left hand. But if it works. Yeah, it will. Oh, if it works, then it's double there too, you know. But stay tuned. We'll be right back. And um, so exciting to have Michelle on the stage. Back and forth. Well. Again, you have Nina Ski and Michelle Courier on the stage of All About Art. I am so impressed and honored, Michelle, that you've had time to be on All About Art to share um, you Thank with you. the world. Um, I am curious now as to how you work with your clients. Like, do you go into their homes? Do you fit color schemes, ideas? Uh, how does that work? Well, it works. Um, usually people see my work and if they don't find something on the walls that is perfect, sometimes they'll say, I love this piece, but it's way too big. So I um, love to work directly with clients. And so I will go to your home and I love to work with color samples. I've worked with interior designers for 30 years. Um, that's a challenge to me. I love it. Love going to the space taking photos, visualizing what's going to work, what size, um, and then making something um, that's perfect for them. Um, the one thing is 
when you do hire an artist to do something, give them rain to make to create without being into the painting too much. Um, the reason you like someone's work is their soul is into the painting. I agree. And they get free reign. And once you get restraints and constraints too much on, well, I'd like this, this color, this a little more over here, then you're, you start freezing. You're so, destroying your artist. So it's good to, yeah, to go to the home, get a feel, take the color samples, and then let the artist do the job. So I love that challenge. So I just, um, I got a commission yesterday to do a piece. They purchased a piece that was too big. They loved it. So then I need to do a smaller, something different to go with the piece that oh, nice. that they have. So I'm Well, doing I, that. I know up here in the Lake Tahoe region, um, we have beautiful homes every place, uh, but now we have Marta's Camp, we have Lahontan, we have the Ritz-Carlton, and you're talking huge wall space. Mm -hmm. So what is the largest painting maybe that you have hmm. entertained? I think the large, well, I did a 30 foot by 12 foot backdrop for a play one time. That's awesome <laughs> that, though. <laughs> it's hard to do that. That was difficult. Um, but the largest painting on canvas was probably a little bigger than this one. I'd say it was five by eight feet. That was yeah. the largest. But yeah, it can do any size pretty much. Any size, any colors, mm -hmm. any type of images. Mm -hmm. um, now, if I were, when I go back home to Colorado and I'm coming with my van filled with all my paintings on canvas, what do I need to do to get into Wayward ah, Gallery? Ah, take it Westward Gallery. <laughs> that's okay. I'm thinking of my, wayward, my family, Wayward. Wayward. <laughs> no, that's Westward. Okay, so Shelsa. what do you do? What do you need to do to get in Westward? I only have six painters with me at all times, and that's the max I can handle. Um, I learned my lesson. I had to pare down and, and drop a few. Um, I, ha I look for someone that fits in with my sort of contemporary Western theme. It doesn't, it doesn't mean, you know, horses running across the plains. It just means uh, painting the West or something that feels like the West. And also complements my work. My goal is to have someone come in and want to buy all six of our paintings to hang in their home because they're all complimentary. Sure. Um, so, and then I have a glass blower and I have a sculptor too. So nice. that's that's kind of, I'm keeping it very small. If someone doesn't work out in six months to a year, uh, unfortunately I have to let them go and it doesn't mean they're not wonderful. It just means for whatever reason, people aren't, uh, wanting to take their work home so yeah. and then I, I kind of I haven't really looked for anyone they come to me so if anyone is really interested they could um, just contact the gallery and send email images in their bio and I get a lot that I'm keeping on file mm -hmm. I've got a couple that I really like um, but it, it, I don't look for anybody that's like me because there's no point. I look for somebody that's completely different than my work, sure. yet complimentary, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it, it absolutely does. Now, um, in the corporate world, you've sold many of your, your paintings in larger arenas. Uh, can you talk a little about that? Yeah, I work with a lot of corporate um, companies, the Dow Corning in Michigan has about 20 of my paintings That's in their offices, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, Domino Farms, the Domino Pizzas, ha has uh, them in the corporate offices. Some other places, there are many hospitals in Michigan. Um, Chevron Corporation in Houston. Um, so a lot of the offices have a lot of my paintings. And then um, they're also worldwide in the uh, SBSC, the Bank of China, or, and then um, there's they're in Amsterdam, Italy, uh, I can't, it, it, places I haven't been. Yeah. In Sweden. Yeah. Sweden, Sweden are, is one, yeah. So they're, the paintings are all over the world. I have not been yet. So well, that's I know kind that of fun. You have a great admirer that asked me to ask you a question about. 
what kind of how are you torn between Colorado and Lake Tahoe and how do you make those ah. choices of, of what you're gonna put on that canvas next I mean with hundreds I of pictures have ideas about 20,000 photos to Me paint too. so I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna live that long so <laughs> so I kind of have this little pile that starts like this and then it grows and then I have canvas in every size. I have about a hundred blank canvases in my studio of every size lined up. So I'm up. not abnormal. So there's, yeah, so there's nothing that's going to get in my way. And then I just kind of sift through the pictures and I, I scan them and I, I, whatever is pulling me to paint that day, I paint. And the, lately it's been the, the water, the Tahoe water. Once in a while I go back and I'm, oh, I gotta do a forest. But I've been doing water for five years now, close up into it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's more challenging. So that's, that's the excitement of the challenge. Each blank canvas is, you look at the canvas and you want to beat it. <laughs> now, now what, what kind of music do you listen to? Wow, gosh, I listen to I mean, everything. I'm so eclectic. I find most of my music from my daughter, Kelsey. She has excellent taste in music. I just, she makes me playlists all the time. Um, so I'm, my, I'm a fan of Soundhound. I Soundhound everything. I go into a hair salon and whatever song's playing. So I have a huge library of music, which I think is Amazing. <laughs> right. Well, it's so, important. I mean, you're probably listening so while you're I, writing. And too. it can change. It changes depending on. Uh, I need to be perked up, so you know, I might listen to old school Pearl Jam and just play it really loud. And then sometimes it's jazz, and so it, it you kind of have to go with. One time, I did an entire painting to the sound of crickets. Wow! So, wow! That was it. Yeah. Hey, whatever <laughs> works. You know, and, you know, I mean, so if when I go into Westward Gallery, I might get lucky enough to watch you painting. I paint. Yes, I have my studio in the back where I kind of have the velvet curtain that no one gets in to see Oz because I need, I need to focus and not have uh, any any interruption. Mm -hmm. But when I'm doing fine details, when I'm getting into just the final ends, I usually just sit in a chair for 10 minutes and stare at it and then walk up and do a mark. And then, so I do that in the front of the gallery, in the window. Nice. So, Ooh, nice. so people, and it's usually kids that are like, mommy, mommy, the artist is in there. And I'm like, come in, come in. So yeah, that is a lot yeah, of fun. That's, it's fun. Now, do you do artist openings? Uh, I mean, because you come out with all these different magazines, the latest thing, yeah. this one here, mm -hmm. which I did get to read, and I'm a backward reader, so I start at the back of the book, and that's where Michelle is at, is in the back of the book. So I think that that is really awesome. I, I'm backwards, too. You know, it, well, <laughs> I read know, backwards. I, I just think it, it, the back of the book is so much more important than the front of the book, I'm just saying. <laughs> And I was able to find it with no problem at all. And this is a, a rather new one. I think it goes mm -hmm. through September. This is, yeah, the, this is July, July's issue. July um, issue. So they're, that, they're out monthly, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, I thought that this was so fun. And, you know, again, I, I just can't express what a fabulous artist this, this artist is that, that happens to be on the stage with us today and sharing your, your inner self with your paintings and I appreciate that because it's very private and that's why I call this totally exposed all that <laughs> art because I I think as an artist you're showing your soul oh, to yeah. the world yeah. you know it's and that's vulnerable to some but you're a pretty stout standing firm I think now <laughs> not 10 years ago but now yeah now I'm pretty um I like to hear feedback of my work. It doesn't, I used to get offended. I don't get offended anymore. I've had people walk into a show and say, I hate that painting. I'm like, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what I learned when I was, I, I was taking classes is my instructor said, you know, Nina, if you turn down the lights and you squint one eye and you look really hard, everything looks good. <laughs> no, he also said that when, when people take the time to look at your artwork, whether they love it or they don't love it, it's a compliment that mm -hmm. they took time out of their life to 
look. Oh, sure. And, yeah. and that's just as powerful um, to get that buy back, you know, because that only makes you better. Oh, you yeah. Know? I like feedback on my work. I, I, I invite it. I, I think it's I, imperative. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't want to hear, oh, it's nice or pretty. I, I like to hear right. how somebody's feeling well, about it, even if it's honest. a negative. Well, you need the honest truth, because how does a person better themselves um, besides picking themselves back up and going forward and, and mm -hmm. making it better, you know? So when people do give you honest feedback, then you are able to become a better artist, you know? Um, now, did you teach your kids or did they just innately pick it up? Uh, they innately picked it up and one day, I think my oldest was in fifth grade and she said, Mom, I'm really upset because my friends at school took your art class and they know how to draw a face and I don't. So <laughs> I had to sit down and teach my kids how to draw a face. So. Yeah. Well, it's, it's amazing how everything, you know, God kind of gave us measurements that are exactly Oh, perfect. we're, yeah, we're very proportioned. Yes, mm -hmm. and I think that that, I mean, like some people say your foot's this long. It or, is. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really amazing how everything does equal out that way. And you would not imagine that eyes are not up here where people start. In the middle of your head. They're right in the center. Get, get yourself a ruler or a measuring tape and, and just try it. It's yeah, amazing it how is. it works out, you know. Um, now, as far as composition. Um, do you crop? Obviously, you, you crop because the forest has to stop someplace, uh -huh. you know. So every one of your images seem to go right off the canvas mm -hmm. into a broader world. Um, so, how, how how do you what do you what makes you focus on a certain portion of the composition mm. being the overall painting? Gosh, I don't even think I think about it anymore. I compose in the camera. Um, and as I'm looking through the camera, I can kind of see what I want to paint. And I don't, I'm not even sure. If it registers? I, no, not anymore. It doesn't yeah. anymore. I just, I just shoot automatically and then I, I know that's the composition. So yeah. that's, that's, you know, you can go out with a little square into nature and do this too. Right. And, and you know, sometimes you see a lot bigger, um, when you have a, a slide to look mm -hmm, through. A little you know? square. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little square, then you're able to visualize just a little bit better um, as far as the balance I think and the important. color tones mm -hmm. and um, the stopping in the middle of a painting and walking back to see it from a, a, far, mm -hmm. a further distance than right here where you're painting, mm -hmm. I think is, is imperative also because it's just that one little dab that makes the entire painting, mm -hmm. you know, and um, is there anything that I'm missing? I mean, have I, I just... Hmm, I don't think so. No? I don't think so. I, I'm, I mean, I'll probably oh, think of it oh, later. Oh, you know what I wanted to ask is, what galleries can I find you in? Oh, gosh. I, I'm sorry to put um, in you, but let's kind of... Yes, um, I'll try not to forget somebody. Of course, Art Obsessions here in, in Truckee, California. My, my number one besides my own. Um, and then Westward Gallery. My gallery is in... Denver, Colorado, on and Tennyson Street, on Tennyson right? Street, which is booming and going crazy, and then Freed Gallery in Lincoln City, Oregon. Um, I have two Northwood Gallery and C to C Gallery in Michigan, and is that it? Oh, uh, you have one in South no, Shore. No, I have a brand new one. Oh, in South Shore too. I'll go back to that. I have a brand new gallery, Montana Trails, in Bozeman, Montana, which I'm very honored to be in and a new gallery, Eminent, in South Lake Tahoe and Pacific Crest Gallery in South Lake Tahoe also. Very I nice. think that's all. I may have missed one, but. Well, you know, a, a, a curiosity question once again is, do you pick your galleries or do your galleries pick you? Um, or what makes you decide that gallery is good enough for your work? Um, Art Obsessions, David's Gallery, I walked in and I said, this is where I want to be. It, so it, I, I, I I walked in and two st two steps in. I said, "This is where I want to be." It's a feeling. It's mm -hmm. a gut. It's a gut instinct. I did the same thing in um, Bozeman, Montana, um, with Legacy, which now has sold to Montana Trails. I walked. I looked. I walked in and I said, "This is where I want to be." Mm -hmm. I just have a gut a gut instinct, and I just uh, I kind of get my foot in a little bit, mm -hmm. just let them know I'm interested, and then they usually pick me. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, once again, I mean, you're like magazines galore, books galore, um, 
so many different galleries. Uh, you just are, are like a, a sunflower that just exploded. It's a very, you know? very uh, gratifying, wonderful way to live. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, to be able to be dependent on your own love of mm -hmm. life, you know, and to do that. So um, as long as I'm not forgetting anything, I which I probably so. am, there's a gazillion <laughs> questions. You must get an insurance company <laughs> with those hands. Um, I'm really, really proud of you, Michelle. And I'm Thank so proud you, Nina. that, uh, you know, I've had this opportunity to, to share you with all my viewing audience. And, and I will be uploading to Beamio and to my YouTube channel. Okay. So let's get it around the world. Let, let everybody know that you too want a piece of Michelle Courier. So thank you so much. Thank you. you see yeah. And thank you for staying tuned. We will see you again sometime soon. Have a great night. Or a great day. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. <laughs>